discussion is on uh, making the most of content aggregation in SharePoint. I have two part series. I have the one part series right now that's going to be on SharePoint 2010. And the second series, um, or the second part, was going to be after this session, which will be covering the 2013 content, ag content aggregation. So once again, if you were here for the other session, I apologize. I understand if you want to leave. But if you like to stay, that's good too. <laughs> okay. Some people didn't get the memo. I didn't get the memo. No, just kidding. All right. Um, how many people are still working with SharePoint 2010? Great. Anybody on 2013? Anybody on 2010 going to migrate to 2013? Okay. Yeah. How many people use the Content Query web part? Data view web part. Oh, wait till you have to. If you're in my session in the next session, you're going to might not be happy with some news. <laughs> okay. I'm sitting down here um, because I have the mic here. I've got Brett linked up. He's kind of my backup. He's going to be my Vanna White. Especially, too, if I'm about to pass out, he's going to help me with uh, kind of staying up, right? Um, so I got him as the backup. About me, my name's Christina Wheeler. I am an independent consultant. I live in Georgia in the U.S., uh, but I travel a lot. I've actually been living there for two years now. I've kind of been all over Philadelphia, California, Texas. Uh, I actually was happy to leave California. Not that it's a bad state, it's just a different state. Uh, <laughs> Um, I have a blog. I got a new blog site up. It's still a work in progress. Um, I've been working on a book for the past three months that was awesome but kicked my butt. So, um, but I have the new blog site, www.thesharepoint411.com. The hardest thing for me is coming up with the blog domain name. So if anybody has any suggestions, if you think this one is lame, please give them to me. <laughs> um, I, there's my email. I give uh, a live email account now because I realize it's easier for people to memorize. Um, and I have two published books, the SharePoint 2010 Field Guide, and that name is kind of deceiving. It's kind of this book of, you know, when you're out on the field, it's kind of this, you know, back, beginning to end thing just with some tips and tricks and things like that for when you're, you know, working on a 2010 environment. Um, the book that I just finished that I'm very, very proud of, um, that myself, Penny Coventry, Darvish, and Tom Reesing had worked on was the SharePoint 2013, 2013 Inside Out. It's currently in production right now. There is an ex, uh, there is the early release that's out um, on the ebook. But if you order, you can get the ebook, and then you can also get the published book once it's published. Um, but I covered the web content management sessions, web parts, um, all the business intelligence. Which anybody work on business intelligence in SharePoint? I think it's really awesome and much better in 2013. And now I actually want to work on BI projects. Um, I am a SharePoint consultant and a trainer. I teach um, development, I teach web content management, and I'm starting to teach end user training as well. Um, kind of jack of all trades, I guess, so to speak. And it is hot. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is, wow, this is the lights. <laughs> all right, so at least if I'm going to sweat, maybe everybody else will sweat, and then I won't feel so bad. Okay. So what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to, um, I'm going to approach things a little bit differently. Now, most people, I think you guys have been using the Content Query Web Part. One question I want to ask, has anybody been using the dynamic filtering with the Content Query Web Part? Okay, one person, two people. Okay. Everybody else, no, so this is great. I think this is going to be some new stuff for you. Um, I showed Brett the, the dynamic filtering one time, and I was excited when I actually taught you something as well, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I've been working with the content query since uh, SharePoint 2007. There's just been a lot of improvements, I think, with the web part. Um, so I'm going to give a quick overview. Anybody not work with the content query web part? Okay. So some of this I'll give a quick overview. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the query options. I'm going to focus on what's new. I'm going to really focus on the filtering, the dynamic filtering, and how you can leverage that with your site. Um, and give a demo and then take questions. And how long do I have until on my presentation? You have okay, good. So anybody who's been working with SharePoint, especially from the beginning, you know, when you first had SharePoint come out, everybody looked at it as, this is document management, document repository. They didn't really look at it as other features, and I'll see if I can get up here. 
so I can still have the mic. Whoops. Other features and capabilities. Can you guys hear me back there? Okay, good. Other features and capabilities, such as web content management. When SharePoint 2003 came out, you just had very out of the box, and it just was very hard to customize. Then SharePoint 2007 came out. So then you had the nice web content management features that were integrated into <coughs> SharePoint, which gives you the content query web part. Well, that was nice, but it was still kind of a pain to work with. You had to export the file. You had to do specific things for the content query web part. Now, the, co the content query web part, well, so what happened was when you had the content query uh, before this, I, I have this up here because this is how SharePoint used to be, in my opinion. People would throw up content, but they didn't know how to actually organize it and roll up the content to make it easier to find. So I had a lot of customers that actually would duplicate content. They might have one site where they want a document library, but they want the same document library in another part of the site. Well, they didn't know how to use a content query. They didn't know how to roll up the data. So they would actually make a copy of that document, of that document library in another place. Hot links was another one. They wanted to have custom links throughout the site. Same thing, they would duplicate the links. And let's admit, that's a maintenance nightmare. Then another problem is people were creating sites and content everywhere, and the hardest thing was actually finding the stuff. And let's admit, a lot of people, or let's admit, search kind of sucked in the beginning, right? So it was still hard to find content. So then when you had the content query web part, it was a lot better and easier to be able to display your information on the website to kind of make better uh, user views, I guess, or dashboards, or however you want to say it, so that people can actually easily find your content better. So that's why I love the content query web part. The content query web part, just a quick overview for those that have not worked with it, it's a web part, it's an out of the box web part, and I say out of the box meaning you're not touching Visual Studio. Now, when I say out of the box, some people get upset, clients have got upset because they think, well, they realize if you want to customize it, you had to do a little bit more advanced options to customize the web part to get the results that you want. Well, in their view, if you had a touch XSL, they said, wait a minute, I thought you said this was an out of the box web part. I said, well, it is. This is part of the configuration of the web part. It's a little bit more advanced, right? But it's still out of the box and you're not touching Visual Studio to work with this web part. So that's what an out of the box web part is. Um, then, but what the content query web part is used to display and aggregate content from within any areas within your site collection. That's what it can do out of the box. Now it is part of the publishing feature. So if you're running foundation, uh, what is the 2013 called? The free version, is it? What's well, SharePoint Online, stuff like that. Or if you're running Office 365, on, or running um, standard server or standard enterprise, you have the publishing features available. So once you have to enable the publishing features to have this web part available. Once you have it activated, you get the content query web part and you get some of the other roll-up web parts that are available. Um, now, a lot of times people think that they have to have go create their site and create it as a publishing site to have these features. That is not the case. I'll be honest with you, when I create a lot of external facing websites, I never use the publishing template. Reason being is the publishing template has a lot of limitations because you will not have all the features available, such as the collaboration features, you know, some of the other ones. Um, so you're kind of restricted and stuck within part of what the publishing template offers. Now they did that, the publishing template uh, scale down the options by design because it does a lot more lockdown. So that way when you're in external facing for security reasons and things like that, you don't have to. It's going to have certain things locked down for you that you're not going to have to deal with. But a lot of times customers decide, okay, I want my external facing website. I want to use the content create web part, right? They enable publishing and they said, how come I can't create some of these specific libraries? Can I go enable a feature? And you can't do it. So the reason why I say this is that you can create a blank site, a team site, create any other type of site template and then just go and activate the publishing feature. The publishing feature is a site collection <laughs> feature and it's also a site feature. Now, at first I thought Office 365 did not uh, allow you to have those, the functionality. And when I have um, opened my Office 365 account, I was happy to see you can. How, anybody on Office 365 or SharePoint Online? 
Okay. Is the content by search web part available? Okay. Well, we'll talk about that in the next session. All right. I've uh, always been an on-premise developer and a server-side developer. So it's been hard for me working on Office 365 projects because you are got a lot more limitations. But I love the content query web part because you don't have to worry about those limitations on what you can do. Except for if you want to write custom code. Okay. So here's some of the query options. You can query an entire site collection. You can query a specific subsite or you can point to a specific list. Now, depending upon what option you're gonna to wanna to do will depend upon what type of content you're rolling up. So, for example, I may have libraries that are spread out throughout my site collection. So what I would do is create a custom content type for that. So every time I create those libraries, it's using that specific content type, and then I'm gonna roll up using my content query web part for that specific content type. So that way I don't have to worry about everything being in one library. It can be throughout my site, but it's all gonna roll up. Then I can set the filter options on how I want that information to be displayed. I've seen a lot of customers, well this is why it's very, very important to when you're creating your site, or you might already have a site and, you're, and then you decide you're gonna start using the content query web part, you'll realize the importance of the content types. Um, a lot of times customers will create their site, create their content, use all the out of the box content types, but then they wanna filter the data that comes back and then they have problems because the out of the box content query web part oh, is what, three filter options? Okay. So if you gotta go beyond three, you're gonna have problems. So it's gonna be much harder for you to filter through that content. So that's why it's better to create your own custom content types that you can filter that actual content. Now, I'm gonna bring this up, and I'm not doing this just because Brett's in here, I'm doing this because I'm a very, 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 um, uh, I've worked with this for so long I've learned with the limitations the Content Query web part has. So if I need to go past those limitations, Lightning Tools has a Lightning Conductor web part that I use. The out of the box web part is in a single site collection. The Lightning Conductor Tools web part allows you to roll up multiple site collections and multiple web applications now. The multiple web applications to me is a big one, it's really cool. But so most of the time, depending upon what your requirements are, will depend on, hey, yep, you can just use the out of the box, or if you need to go beyond that, I recommend looking into this web part, which I can show. All right, so here's your, your query options, which I'm gonna give a demo. But here's some query options. You can filter based on the content types. You can add additional columns for display. How many worked with the content query web part in 2007? This is a bit of a headache. Um, when, uh, so you can add additional columns for display, which I'm gonna show in the next screen. You can customize the presentation styling, and you have the ability to target audience. Now, a lot of times people think target, audience targeting is security trimming, which it's not. All it does is change the display, the, your audience, let me try to scoot here. Um, if I fall, we'll see what happens. Okay. so. What it does is that you might display results. You want to uh, audience target. Um, oh, I had a customer that had different vendors, different partners. Those partners couldn't know about each other partner. So they wanted to change the display of the results. But what they didn't understand is they were using audience targeting but didn't realize if a person knew how to kind of modify a few things just in the browser that they could have got around and seen the information. It's not security trimming. All right. Here's one of the things that I love with 2010. In 2007, when you're using the content query web part, you had to, if you added the web part to the page, you would get uh, just, it would roll up all the pages that was on the site. And what happens is you kind of go and change what you want to point it to, and then you'd have a drop down list of styles that you want to select. Well, those styles would actually be displaying uh, specific columns. So it was common to get like the title column, description columns, things like that. But what happens is, is that you had to export the web part. Oh, where's my other slide? I messed up here. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm doing this one first. You had to export the web part, modify the common view fields property, and then re-import it to, um, to add the, the additional columns that you wanted to that web part. Now, there's a couple downsides to that. One of the issues was you had to have the internal field name. What I mean by that, when you create a column, you go in, you put the name of the column. 
Well, then what happens is when you're creating that column, SharePoint generates an internal field name. So if you have a lot of customers like mine or like me in the very beginning when I was just working with SharePoint, I might, you might decide, okay, well, I want to put a space or I might want to put a dash, a hyphen, something like that in your display name. Well, you don't realize that when SharePoint creates the internal field name, it's going to transpose the space or the dash, the hyphen, you know, or any special character you do to the XML representation of that character. Well, that can be a pain. Space isn't a big deal, right? Because it's what, X underscore, wait, what, underscore X two zero 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 two two zero zero something like that, right? But um, I've had the Department of Defense create columns and with the really insane characters, special characters. And one of the special characters, I had the hardest time trying to get the, the, um, what the XML representation of that character was. And um, so it's very hard when you're trying to roll up the content. Well, the great, or trying to add in your additional view fields, especially if the internal field name is different. In SharePoint 2010, they've made modifications to where now you can, you've got the, in your edit panel, you have the ability to map your columns that you want to link. And this can actually, you can put in the display name. So it doesn't have to rely on the internal field name. So this makes it a lot easier. Now, just because you have that doesn't mean, I, I, don't, I think you still should follow best practices for naming your columns, right? Or train your users on how to name the columns. Um, I actually, if I have the time, I really want to write a solution that allows you to modify that. So that way it can auto create or give you another option when you're creating the columns. Don't know why Microsoft hasn't put that in, something like that in there. Anybody in here from Microsoft? Okay, so if I say they pissed me off sometimes or something like that, it's no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, so, but now it's exposed in there. Now it's a little different though on how you work with it. Um, what's happened is you will have a drop down list of the styles that you want to select. And when you select the style, the options you have available here in the text box columns will change. So what will happen is in 2007, you might go and export your web part, put in the common view fields you want to look for, and then go into your style sheet for the XSL and add in, you know, make the modifications you want to do. Well, what you do now in 2010 is you go into your style sheet, make the modifications first, put in the values that you want to look for. So I might do at description, or let's just say at first name or at, you know, speaker bio right? If I do at speaker bio, then what will display there is speaker bio and then the text box below it. So then when I see that, I can map it. Now it won't matter what you name that with your at symbol, what you're looking for. It's just, it's your template saying, I want this. And then your edit panel here saying, okay, map what's in this text box to this value. So I just make it friendly names that I, people would go on and modify the web part and be able to understand and be able to, to make that change. Now, dynamic filtering. This one to me is a big one because I've had so many clients before that uh, one of the common things is, you know, it doesn't matter if you're an internal facing website or external facing website, a lot of companies still want to have, they might use web content management features or even, even if they don't use, saying publishing pages. If you're using publishing pages, you might have like internal news articles. Well, then you click on that news article and you might want to have a related news articles um, web part on the right hand side. So when you click on one of the articles, you go and you're going to see a list of the related articles. Well, what happens is before you couldn't do dynamic filtering out of the box. The way you can add dynamic filtering in 2007 is to subclass that content query web part and then add dynamic filters. Well, Andrew Connell has a very good blog post about that if you're still working in 2007. Um, now, in my situation, I had a lot of problems like Department of Defense, Department of Defense, which I think is what Ministry of Justice here or something like that. I'm learning all the things in the UK, guys. So, um, <laughs> Ministry, of Ministry of Defense, okay. So, Department Ministry, now I got the, the link. Um, so, they wanted dynamic filtering, but we were not allowed any server side access whatsoever. Every single solution I had to do had to be client side, it could not be server side. So I could not subclass that web part. So I had to do a lot of jQuery hacks to kind of give them the results that they wanted. Then I also used the data view web part as well so we can pull in content and do specific things, but we're still we're very, very, very limited. But on SharePoint 2010, 
Okay, so going back to that, the other thing people did in 2007, if you could write custom code, kind of wrote a custom web part to display what they wanted to accomplish. Well, I was very happy when 2010 changes came about with the content query web part because they added the dynamic filtering. So there's two things you can do. You can get the filter value of that's based on a page. So if I have a page and I have title, description, body, right, I can grab, say, I want to filter based on the title. I can grab that and have my content query web part filter based on that title that's going to render on that. And I'm, I'm going to demonstrate that on the fly. Um, the other option is a query string value. So for example, you might have um, a conference website. We have our conference websites. Let me just go ahead and open this one up. I'm using DuckDuckGo. What is it? DuckDuckGo. All right. So instead of Google, I'm using something called DuckDuckGo. Why? Because Google tracks and all these other ones tracks, and I hate tracking. <laughs> okay. So I'm pulling up the SharePoint Evolution Conference. <laughs> Select the name, right? Okay. So. One of the things is, so a lot of the conferences, um, some of the conferences are creating their sites in SharePoint. And if they're running a uh, server, they can use the content editor web part or content query web part. So an example would be, so here I have a list of speakers. Oh, I need to be wired in. You see it? Sorry, there we go. I was wondering why my connection was slow. All right, now I can have Speedy Gonzalez. All right, let me go ahead and run Zoom It. So for you guys back there that I can uh, zoom in and out. Wow, this resolution does throw me off. Oh, I'm a big um, Steelers fan. But yeah, you can shake your head, it's all good. I do like rugby. So, do if you have football out here? I know it's soccer. Do you have, do you have like, what we like how we have American NFL? Football. Do you have American football? Okay. Well, they do, but they call it rugby. And they're <laughs> I love rugby. I really do. There is an American football league, but it's kind of a minority sport. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, rugby. I mean, you know. Why, why have all this protection and stuff? Just like go at it, right? <laughs> <laughs> then have to retire a lot younger and you know, have all these, uh, no, it's good. All right. <laughs> well, I have a lot to learn, don't I? <laughs> okay, so here's an example. I'm just gonna show you visual and then I'm gonna show you how to work with the web part. Um, Here's an example of a page. Well, what you could do is actually have this page, have a content query web part that's pulling up the list of speakers. And then when you click on the speakers, it could take you to another page that could render the results. Well, instead, I might click on it. Let me just make it bigger, make it look like it's one page, right? So you might have it where you click to get the speaker bio. Well, instead of, so pretend there's just one, let me make it smaller. So there's one value here, right? Let's not pretend all of them are rolled up. So I might want to click on Christina Wheeler. But what I can do is, instead of having individual pages to display the speaker information, I can have one page, add the content query web part on it, and use filter. I can use a query string value to filter, where I would pass in, um, let's just pretend like this is speakers, speaker bio.aspx and pass in uh, title equals and then Christina Wheeler, which I'm going to show you. So what I can do is filter the query string value. That way I have one page. It's got a content query web part on it. I'm adding the dynamic filtering so that way depending upon when I, when I clicked on the value, it passed in the query string value and then this page is rendering that result. So you're not having multiple pages. You're having one page and you just control the presentation styling of how you want that to display. Does that make sense? All right, and that's what I'm going to demonstrate. Now, I had a really, really good demo, so I'm doing a simple demo from scratch because the really good demo kind of blew up. And when <laughs> All right.
So that is what I'm going to, um, that is what I'm going to demonstrate. Now here, so these are the two options that I'm going to display and show you. One is the page field value. And what that does, it's a token to specify the field on the page layout. Um, it will dynamically replace the value of the filter, so you'll have an option and it'll actually just pull the value. Now you can have a page, you have a publishing page, and you're displaying the content. It doesn't matter if that field is actually displayed on the page. What matters is that field is just a part of that page, so it's part of the metadata, right? Um, so a common thing is to maybe have, my foot's falling asleep, hang on. Oh, now it's stuck. <laughs> Yes. Oh, my foot is really asleep. Okay. So, um, you talking about the chair that I got stuck in? Yeah, it looks like an assault course. <laughs> yeah, I get clumsy when I'm sick, by the way, and get more clumsy when I'm tired. So, I, I'm full of entertainment. Okay. <laughs> so, the two options you have, page field value and page query string value. Let me try to do this. And so on the common one that I use a lot is the query string value to pass in um, the information. But on the related news articles, I might use the page field value. So that way I load the page, I get the, the related news results, and then if I'm clicking on, you know, like the speaker, I can, you know, generate the results of the speaker. So the, an example here on the query string value is, um, Oh, well, here I've got title equals Ben Curry. So what I'll do is I'll set the content query web part to query return to pages where the title field is, it's wrong there, that's supposed to be query string value. Oh yeah, that's right. Title field is equal to the page query, query string value. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead, man, I'm burning up. <sighs> okay. It is hot. So first things, I have my very vanilla out of the box thing because my other demo, like I said, blew up. That's okay, showing you guys how to do this from scratch, right? Um, first thing I want to do is make sure, I'm going to just save on my wireless real quick. Nice. Reconnect, hang on. I have a really hard password. You guys can see it because I don't think you're going to memorize it. Because I can't. We'll get video. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> it's okay. I might be out of this environment eventually. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> it's funny. So, the f <laughs> you know, I'm not quite there today, am I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, the first things first, I'm going in my site. I go to my site settings. What I'm going to do is make sure that my publishing feature is activated. Woo, it's hot. I'm also going to open up um, SharePoint Designer real quick to show you what you're going to see. Hot, 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 hot. I told myself I was never going to use CloudShare again, but for those of you that were here last year, yeah, kind of knew about my little cloud shares crash. Um, that's my site. Here we go. Let's go in here. But now this has been my backup when disaster strikes, and what happens? Disaster strikes. All right, site SP Evo. Let me open that one. Cancel. Yeah, for some reason, too. Um, I couldn't connect locally without being in a remote desktop. I kept getting a 401 authorized. And maybe I hacked my computer a little bit so I can stream Netflix and Pandora. <laughs> so now I screwed up my actual connections. <laughs> okay, I'm opening up the site real quick. Let that open. While we're waiting, I'm going to pull out my bag of tricks. So the one thing I like, I don't know if you guys have heard of this, the Jawbone Jambox. 
Bluetooth speaker. So I was so stoked because I got Netflix streaming, Pandora streaming, and had it playing through this in the hotel. Now, I bet my neighbors next door probably weren't happy with me because I was playing some pretty cool music, right? <laughs> then at one point, I'm like, oh, yeah, I better lower it. But it works pretty well, and they have a bigger one, too. But I travel with it. It's pretty nice. Then I learned, if you want to stream Netflix, this is my little quick tip of the day, right? Totally not SharePoint. If you want to stream Netflix or Pandora, just connect to a US VPN. Now, you don't, and uh, there's, a, uh, there's different VPN solutions you can sign up for online. It works like a charm. <laughs> so when I log in, it thinks I'm in Georgia. And then when I disconnect it, it knows I'm in the UK. That's how you, oh, see, you guys, of course you guys would know how to do that. OK. So here you'll see I opened up my site in SharePoint Designer. And on the left, I thought I, oh, Zoom has got to be on this environment. Crap. Hang on. OK, well, I can't quite zoom. What's the key to zoom on? Uh, I want to zoom it. Let me see if I can. Control 1, I did that. Oh, yeah, I can do that. That's right. I'm just like, I like to zoom. Oh, no, I need to do it with SharePoint Designer, though. Hold on, give me one second. Oh, there is a TV in the back. Oh, you guys can see then, so we're good. OK, then I don't need to worry about it. So on the left here. Actually, no, I'd like to do my markings. Give me one second. See, I was all put together. It was running locally, but you know, nothing worked right. Because my brain doesn't think straight when I feel like crap. OK. I heard you guys had winter for a very long time, too. <laughs> I think I brought the Georgia sunshine. Just kidding. All right. <laughs> They'll get plenty of sun. A lot of humidity too. <laughs> All right, got it. This is what I like to do. I ran it. Control one. Oh, now I can make people sick, just like me. All right. So here on the left, you're going to notice something. You'll see master pages, site groups, things like that. But what you don't see. Um, you don't see page layouts, because page layouts is a part of the web content management features. So if I go here and I go to all files, there are specific files that are used for the content query web part. So if I go to all files, I'm going to go into the style library. When I go in the style library, I see XSL style sheets. If I open it, oh, it does have those in there, because I probably, act, oh, because I'm in the site collection level, that's right. Let's open up another site, hold on. I appreciate you guys being patient with me. I didn't plan on getting sick. OK. Nice. Things just love me today. Um, all right. So pretend that doesn't show up. <laughs> OK. But you don't see the page layout. So since I don't see page layouts, I know that this feature has not been activated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on my site collection, because I realize I'm at the site collection level. Um, and I'm going to check. First, the site collection features. Go down there, scroll down, look for publishing. So publishing has been activated, but it hasn't been activated at the site level. So now I'm going to go back, go to my manage site features. Got a lot of stuff installed on this one. Um, scroll down, look for publishing, and this is what I'm going to go ahead and activate. So I'll go ahead and activate that feature. Boom, boom, boom. Come on. Very slowly, it will activate. Okay, it's activated. We'll scroll down, just double check. Yes, now I can go back into SharePoint Designer. I'll refresh. If I refresh, now you see page layouts shows up. Page layout shows up, and now let's pretend like those files that weren't there all of a sudden popped in. Woohoo! <laughs> so, before I demonstrate, I'm going to explain these three files. You have the content query main, the header.xsl, and the item style.xsl. I think I had that on my slide. OK, right here. There's XSL files that are used by the content query web part. Now, a lot of you know what these files are. 
and some of you don't, so I'm going to go over them. The content query main.xsl is your querying of your data. Um, your item style.xsl is for the actual styling of the items that are being returned. And then your header.xsl is for your group styling. So if you do a group by, you can pick what group style you want to use. Now, what will happen is you'll notice when you go and add your content query web part and modify it, it'll automatically have the default group style selected. Well, it doesn't, it'll ignore that if you're not actually grouping. But when you're grouping is when it's going to actually use that style. Now, the style sheets are located in your style library in the XSL style sheets. Now, what I do, the recommendation is not to modify these existing files, but instead make copies or make your own files and then link it to your content query web part. Now, for t because of time constraint and my demo blowing up, I'm actually going to modify the other box file, which I don't recommend, right? But uh, I'm going to show you, if you do happen to go that route, don't overwrite the templates that are in that file. Just create your own additional templates on the bottom. Okay? And I'll show you how to do that. But like I said, I recommend, I'm, and I'm going to post a blog post. I know I've promised blog posts for quite a while, but I promise this time, because at least I got a new blog site up finally. Um, I am going to post a blog post on showing you how to actually create your own custom files and how to link them to the content query web part. I just don't have time to present it in today's session. Okay? All right. So those are located in there, and then, like I said, if publishing has not been enabled at all, you would not see these files in your XSL style sheets until you activate it. So that's why I said it magically appeared, even though it was already there. Um, there's two types of styles that can be selected. You have your group and you have your item. And like I said, your grouping style sheet is your header.xsl, and your item style is the item uh, the item style.xsl. Now, when we go in to do that, you're going to notice something. Um, we're going to see the names. This is the thing that drives me nuts, and I know somebody uh, one year had actually posted, figured it out. I'm going to go on my site. I'm going to go on my server. Wait, public network, close. Okay, so now that it's been activated, I'll go here. I go on my lovely. Can you tell what template I used? <laughs> Team site totally blew up my demo. All right. So let's do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just insert a content query web part. What I'll do is ins insert web part. When I do that, I'm going to select content roll up. I'll select content query. I'm going to click add. Now I'm using this rich, it's just a wiki page. You have wiki pages and you have publishing pages. I like using publishing pages because you have the web part zones. But I'm just going to go ahead and add this right here right now just so you can see different options that I'm trying to explain. Okay. Pub and meet. Pub. Oops, wrong one. Oops. Christina, what are you doing? Is that better? Just realized I made it brighter because I just forgot I'm on battery. All right, so I go back here. And I just messed up my page because I hit the Windows button. <sighs> All right, insert web part. If it was not um, activated, we would not see this in the options, or if it was never activated before. But I'll go ahead and insert the content query web part. When I insert it, I guess I already have one added, so you see two there. But I'll go ahead and modify it. So I'm going to say edit web part. In 2007, when you added the content query web part, it automatically displayed results. When 2010 came about, they made it where it's not going to display anything. You just immediately go in and start modifying it. So what I'm going to do is um, I clicked edit web part, and when I did that, it gives me the option now oh, over here. Love this resolution. Hang on. Probably because I've got it bumped up. I have bad eyes even though I wear glasses. Well, I, I don't see well even with my glasses. Okay, so here's the query options you have, the three different options. Does anybody ever uh, have requirements to go beyond the site collection? Okay, so then what I was exp um, recommending earlier would be good. But what I'm going to show you is the out of the box. So here you'll see it does default to the pages library, but here we would update to the whatever our content type would want to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and create some content on the fly here. SP sites. The first thing I do before I create my content, or even if I have content created and I want to change that, the content type for that library, 
Um, I would go to my site settings. I would go here. I, um, I may go and create first my site columns. Um, I'm going to give this a little quick tip too because some people may not be aware, aware of this. A lot of times, it was, especially when you're using the content create web part and displaying your libraries, create site columns. Create it at the site level for your columns. Do not create it at the list level because chances are, um, so what I'll do is I'll create the site columns that I want to use for my libraries. Then I'll create the content type that I want to use and add those site columns to that content type. Then I go and activate the content type on the libraries that I want to use for rolling up the data. And so that way it pulls in all the site columns and it's using the content type, right? So I'll just go ahead here. I'm going to create a few site columns real quick. I just speaker title. This is what I'm going to show you right here, too. How do I, I want to scroll this, oh, whatever. Okay. So let me close this. I need more room right here. Lock the toolbars. Here we go. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys. So I'm going to create my column, but you see here I'm doing speaker title. But the first thing I'm doing is doing speaker title, no spaces, no special characters. So when it gets created, it creates the internal field name for it. That's going to be clean and um, it's going to be clean to use. So I'll have speaker title. Or I might actually just use title and rename title, right? So let's just say we got, let's do speaker bio. So speaker bio, I'm going to make it multiple lines of text. I'm going to add my new group. So the grouping is just for display purposes. It's better um, for just organization of your content types. I'll call this SP Evo custom columns. Oh, yeah. I'm a mess. Good thing I'm not working on client work this week. <laughs> okay. Uh, SP Evo custom columns here. I could change anything that I want. I might just leave it enhanced or I'll go ahead and make it rich text. I'm going to click OK. Then I can filter here by my SP Evo custom columns. Here I got my speaker bio. So now I got speaker bio. You see no spaces. If I click on the field, come on. You're going to see, oops, go back, the internal field name that shows up in the list here. So field equals, where did you just go? Field equals speaker bio, and notice there's no spaces. So now it's clean. So now what I'm doing, I'm going back in here now and changing the display name. So going in and putting my space, and I'll hit OK. So then I might have another one, want to do speaker photo. It would have a percentage 20. Yeah. yeah, if I add a space, I have a percentage 20, and then the XML representation for that is X200, zero, zero, something like that. I can't remember what it is. Now, it's, it's, I don't, the spaces are fine to me because you, it's easy one to transform, but the other special characters are a pain. So I've gotten in the habit of actually not doing it. Because I like to, um, especially when you give you know URLs to people and stuff like that, just like to be have it cleaner. Um, but you know what? Let me go ahead and do that, just so we all see. So I'm going to go ahead and put the space speaker space photo. So you're going to see what's going to happen and what you're going to get. I'm going to make this an image. You can do hyperlink or picture, but because I'm doing publishing, I can actually do image with formatting and constraints for publishing. Should be able to. Click OK. I'll refilter again here. Click on my speaker photo field. So now that I've on my speaker photo column field, you're going to see, oh, go back. Field equals speaker. Actually, it puts it in there. You've got uh, speaker percent 5F, X0020 percent 5F. Okay, now if you're using it with the content query web part and you have to use the internal field name or you're doing code, it's not going to be percent five F. It's going to be underscore X zero zero two zero underscore. So you got to know that stuff. So that's why I thought keep it clean. You're not going to have to worry about it, right? 
So that's what I want to display there. But you can't, you can't, once it's created, you cannot change it. Unless you use like a third party tool like MetaViz or something like that to basically re you know, completely, you can redo content types and things like that. Or migrate content types, stuff like that. But you can't change it. Unless I delete this column and recreate the column. That's the only way. Unless you can do it in PowerShell, maybe? I don't think so. Okay, so now I have two columns here. Um, now I'm going to go back to my site content types. I'm going to create a speaker content type. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this, I have two options here, because you can roll up content at the, from a list, you can roll up content from the pages library. I'm going to demonstrate creating content or like creating the speaker list within an actual list instead of creating content pages. So I'm going to show you guys this. Okay. So I'm going to create my speaker content type. I'm going to have the base be list content types and I'm going to base it off item. Because of course, right, you're creating custom content types. When you do, it has to have a parent base content type. So my base is, is item. Here I'm going to go ahead and add my grouping here. SP Evo custom content types. Okay. I can do speaker bio, speakers, speakers, whatever. I'm going to, I can do speakers list. Because I'm going to do one for pages too, so I'll do speakers list. Custom content type. Click OK. Now here it doesn't matter if you do a space, right? It's not going to screw you up because all the content types are based on GUIs, aren't they? Yeah. <coughs> Click OK. Come on. So i um, doing my speaker list. Now, since I did it based off item, the first column that I get is title. So I am going to use title, but I'm also going to use, I'm going to add from my existing site columns. Come on. I'm going to group by my SP Evo custom columns. And I'm going to add my speaker bio and my speaker photo. And I'm going to uh, just leave the default setting to update all of the content types that are inheriting from this type. I'm creating this for the first time, so it's not going to matter, right? But I'm going to go ahead and leave that checked as default. Click OK. And when I click OK, there I have my content type. So the next thing I'm going to do is go and create my list and then change the content type of that list. So go all items, create. I'm going to create a custom list because you can't select your custom content type here. The only thing you do is create your list. So I'm going to create my list called speakers. Click more options. I'll just I'll let it display in the quick launch. Click create. So now I have my my list, but the problem is, is this list is off the item custom or the item content type. So now I'm going to go to my list settings and before I can change the content type that's being used for this list, I have to enable the option to be able to modify the content types or allow managing the content types for this list. So the first thing I'll do is go click on advanced settings. And the first option you have here is allow management of content types. Now I'm going to go back before I do that. You're going to notice here, I have columns, but you don't see any option here for content types. So as soon as I enable this flag and turn it on, then we're going to see some more options available on our list settings page. So go ahead and click OK. Another quick tip, in case you didn't know, if some people don't like the dialogues that pop up, you can go into your list and actually turn that off so it actually the it'll go the old way, the old school way of just displaying in the page. Um, you can change that for all your lists. So I just want to show you that. All right. So now since I've enabled that option, now you see content types. And you see I have item here. Well, what we want to use is the speakers list content type. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and add from existing site content types. And I'm running out of time, aren't I? Okay. Add from existing site content types. Click on my SP Evo, add it, click OK. 
Now that I've added it, you'll see I have two, but the problem is the default is set to item. What I want to do is make the speakers list default. So now I'm going to click change new button order and default content types. Is it just for minibytes? You could. Let's see if it'll let me do it. Um, can't delete it. You can only just make it invisible. Yeah, I can only make it invisible. That's right. So what I'll do is I'll change the new. Oh, that was the same one. So I'll make that one speakers list. I thought I could delete it now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, now I can. Delete. Sorry, I'm not thinking straight. Yes. Don't delete it. Why? I'm not. Del okay, so here's what's happening. Okay, I know this is going to scare you. I'm not deleting the actual content type I'm, or the site column. I'm deleting. I'm not, if I were to click on item here on the parent and then try to delete it, that's where you mess up. Okay? <laughs> But you're right, I probably shouldn't delete it because I've had so many customers accidentally delete it or rename it. They renamed title to something else and then couldn't figure out why they couldn't change it back to title. I have to run a PowerShell script to fix that one. So if I wanted to, though, I could delete this. And so that way in the list, I mean, we would only have the speakers list. But since I hit it, I, and it's not visible, and this one's visible, and this is default. I'm not going to have to worry about it, right? So then I'll go back to my list. I'll go to items. New item. Now you're going to see speakers list. Oh, maybe this should say speakers, whatever. It's all good. Um, so here I've got speakers, so I can create a new. So add my speaker, add a new, or if I click add item. And it. There we go. If I change that dialogue option, it wouldn't be opening up in a new dialogue, by the way. So here, I'm going to put Brett Lonsdale. Nice. <laughs> Brett Lonsdale. Bio. <laughs> Photo. Do a screenshot and use pink today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I lost my connection. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> King of BCS. Okay. Let's grab a photo. SharePoint Evolution Conference. Did I not pull you up on this one? No, the other one. Evolution or Evolutions Evolution. Conference. Yes. I always use Google or DuckDuckGo to pull up because, you know, you might accidentally pull up the wrong White House or things like that, right? Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going in now to just pull off Brett's photo from the conference website. I know we have a few minutes, so I'll do this quick. Try to. All right, well, let me go in. Come on. All right, so let's go find Brett. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna upload Brett's photo. Now I used, you'll see I can insert the picture because the column I created was the actual publishing image or the yeah um, option instead of the hyperlink or picture, right? I'll be honest, I hate the other way because you gotta train your users, go upload it here, then go and point to it here, right? I just wanna be able to insert this picture. Insert, come on, don't I lose my connection again. I do have a webcast too, though, by the way, that I did last year because of the cloud share issue I had. I'm going to, um, I'm going to make sure that uh, that webcast gets re-added on these videos so you guys have it, okay? Because it has that working demo that I had crashed. This is kind of more exciting. Is it? Good. Yeah. Good. It makes me happy. <laughs> Say that again. Okay, good. That makes me feel better. Yeah, right. You're right. <laughs> oh, I can't. I do have to upload this darn stinking image. Okay, well. What? <laughs> Did I say darn stupid? <laughs> I didn't say bloody. <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> I did. <laughs> All right, you're not getting a picture right now. 
So I'm quick save. Uh, I'm going to go to my, my, my view real quick and update the view because right now I just see title. But what I want to see is um, the title, the body, speaker bio, and speaker photo. Okay. So what I'm going to show you real quick since I'm running out of time, I'm going to go and create a page. I'm going to add me too. Hold on. Speakers. Christina. One big mess. I said one big sick mess. Okay, so now I'm going to go and create a page. This time I'm going to create a publishing page instead of a wiki page. And what I'll do is to do that, I'm going to create. Uh, I'm going to create new content. So I'm going to click on more options. Because if I click new page, it's going to be whatever the default is. So chances are it's going to create a wiki page. There's an option to change that, which I should also put on a blog post. But my default right now is wiki pages, so I want to go to create a publishing page. So I went and clicked to create. Now I'm going to click publishing page, click create. Click create. Why is publishing page a normal page? I want the web part zones. Yep. My lovely web part zones here, right? Now, since this is in a roll-up page, it's going to be pages that are going to have a web part to do the filtering. Um, if I actually wanted to have the speakers each have their own visual pages, then I would create my own custom speakers content type using the publishing page, right, and then use that. But I'm just using creating a roll-up page, so I don't care about the content type. I'm just going to create a single page that's going to use for the speaker's bio. Speaker bio. Uh, the one thing I do like in 2010 is that if you put a space in your title, it puts a dash. It replaces it with the dash for the name. Because, you know, you're not going to want it speaker percent 20 bio dot ASPX, right? So here, I'll just, um, I'll just select a blank web part page for now. I mean, I could create my own custom page layout if I wanted to. But I'll click Create. Hello. There we go. I click Create. I'm just going to go ahead and add my web part. So I'm going to go ahead and add a web part. I want Content Rollup, Content Query. Click Add. I'll go modify the web part. So what I'll do is, um, I, I mean, I'll just go ahead and filter up the entire site collection since I did a custom content type. But what I could do, if I'm just pulling out a one speaker list, I can point to that specific list, right? Um, but I may have speakers broken up into different type of sections and, and do that. But I'll just keep it on here. Here I'm going to go ahead and change my content type that I want to filter from. And it's going to be a custom list because my parent content type is a custom list. It's item. Then I'm going to my SP Evo custom content types. And here you'll see custom li uh, speakers list. Well, that's selected by default because I only have one in that grouping. So I'll go ahead and include child content types is already enabled by default. Here I've got my additional filters if I wanted to filter. What I might do is actually have a visible flag or enable flag. Because for conferences, sometimes speakers will present one year and not present another year. Well, I don't want to have to delete and recreate that speaker each year, so I can just enable and disable them and then filter them on the web part, right? But I didn't do that right now. So I'm not doing any filtering. Then in the presentation styling here, if I scroll down, I might decide um, I'm not doing any grouping. I'm actually going to, oh, I'm sorry, I do need to do a filter option. Duh. I'm going to do a filter, and the filter is going to be – hold on. Why is my filter option not available there? Oh, oh, right here. That's right. Where title equals. So I'm going to do where title equals, and if I hit the help symbol here, this is going to show you your options on what you need if you're going to use the page field value or the page query string value. So what I want to do is I'm going to pass in the title into the query string. So when uh, it's on that page, if I click on Brett, then Brett's going to be passed in, and then it's going to just display the results for Brett. If I click on my name, it'll put my name in the title, and then it'll display the results for that. So I want where title is equal, and I want I'm just using the out-of-the-box column title. 
So you see, I put in, um, oh, I gotta do page query string value, my bad. Page query string title. And you do have to put the brackets, some of those brackets, what are those called? Square brackets, yeah, okay. You have the squiggly ones, you have, you know. Yeah. So I did, where title is equal to the page query string value title. So it's gonna look for that value. Then what'll happen is, I'm gonna scroll down here. I'm not doing any grouping. Um, it does not gonna matter if I wanna limit, or I can limit to one, to only know I'm gonna get one result, right? That might help with uh, the, the performance, maybe? Yeah, possible. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, here's the styling. So I didn't do any grouping, so it's going to ignore the group style. But the group style, remember I said, uses the header.xsl style sheet. Then, and I'm going to show this very out of the box, but like I said, the webcast I have has a more complex um, solution, and I'm going to be posting these online too. So here I've got image on left. You'll see all these default styles. Well, look at all the nice, friendly names. If you go create your own custom template, you don't get to put a friendly name. You have to put a name with no spaces, right? Um, and this is something that uh, I actually will go into more detail in my second session as well. Um, but um, we're gonna use the out of the box one because we're running out of time. So I might just do title and description. So title, link, uh, description here would be speaker bio. But look at that, I can do speaker space bio and it's not gonna be an issue. But what'll happen is if I wanted to make more columns to be available, I would go into my XSL style sheet. Like I said, I'll show this in the next session, um, but I'll show this out of the box. But I would go into that style sheet, I would put in the fields that I want to map and go from there. So now what I'll do is I'll do speaker bio, appearance, I might just call this speaker bio. Okay. I like naming my web parts even if I might change the Chrome type. I want to be able to go on a page and know what the web part is. I don't want to see content query one, content query two, content query three, right? So here, I might just change the Chrome type. Wish I had more time to tell you a funny story about this one. Um, so I'm gonna change it to none, because I don't want to display the title, or maybe I'll just display the title only so it'll say speaker bio, right? Then it'll say Brett Lonsdale or something like that. Then I'll go ahead and click okay, or apply first, make sure I don't get any errors. Can I say, nice. Why? Probably doesn't like the URL. The URL path is not valid. I doesn't care. I don't need. I don't need the link because we're not linking anywhere. So I'll just leave title and uh, speaker bio. Click OK. You actually said. Oh. oh, I could set that to title. Yep. Hold up. Go back. I just messed it up. Query. Darn it. Link is title now. Okay. Click OK. Oh, did I lose my filter? You son of a gun. <laughs> okay, well, to make a title, okay, no, let's go back. No, no field value there. Speaker bio, okay. Did I lose my filter? No, yes, query. Okay, good. Now I'll click okay. Now I should accept. Woohoo! No results. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, thanks. There's no query string value. Watch this. Now, my next session, I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll take it further. Title equals Brett Lonsdale. Did I spell your name right? Mm -hmm. Booyah. <laughs> Looks like crap, because I need to make more customizations. But I will do that in the next session. <laughs> So you see there now, I'll, you know, I'll, in the next session I'll go in more depth and the next session I'm also going to talk about the content by search web port as well. Um, so my, thank you for being patient with me. I apologize for my sickiness and for my, you know, things going a little weird. But uh, let me give you, are there any questions?